good morning. Good Hi. Good morning. Uh, can you please tell the people watching uh, who you are? Yes, I can. Uh, my name is Lisbeth Roth and I was born and raised in the north of uh, Holland and have been living in Haarlem for 15 years now. Okay. Before that in Amsterdam and I am, a, like we said in Dutch, theatermaker. Theater. A theater maker. And I really thought, well, that covers it all. But yesterday I told it to my hairdresser and she said, well, is that the person who builds the theater? And then I thought, oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm the one writing, performing, um, especially uh, site-specific theater. So I do not perform in a theater, but I make whatever possible as my theater. So that being the definition of site-specific is you tailor your, your creation to where you're going to perform it. Yes, I, for instance, uh, well, Mostly the location is the inspiration. So uh, with Theater Group Lava, which is uh, the group that we have here in Haarlem, we look for beautiful spots. For instance, an old bathhouse here in Haarlem or tulip fields or a fishloper spot where the fish women used to uh, walk. And we, that's the inspiration for a show. And then we, well, we think about uh, the history, the people who live there, the people who work there, and what the location means in in the now or in the future. And well, we combine a lot of things. We make stories, and uh, and and that's where the fun starts. Okay, so uh, is maybe, that clear? <laughs> I think so. Well, <laughs> we always figure it out yeah. in the mix. Yeah. Um, so you say that's where the fun starts. So let's jump in to say, where did the fun stop? Oh, uh, well, the, the, for, for us, the fun stopped at, at 12, uh, the 12th of March. Okay, and what were you busy with around that period? Well, we were, on the 20th of March, we would have our opening night hmm. of a new uh, site-specific uh, theater um, performance, which is called Hop, and that was or is, no, no, it was a show about Harlem um, being the, the city of beer. Mm. Hop is one of the ingredients of, of beer and Harlem has its 775th birthday this year. And we wanted to make uh, a show in bars, about bars, on top of the bar, whatever. Oh, and just show, uh, give people a really good bar night out and do some history in there, uh, d tell different stories and then we would uh, make a really big kroegetocht, like we say in Dutch, um, uh, around Haarlem. So we had different bars that would uh, show you our show in their bar. And which bars were participating? Uh, we had uh, the Jopen tap room, we had the Stinkende Emmer. We had uh, het lokaal. We had we were uh, working or talking with the Slichting already, and and we wanted to do at least one terrace because open air that would have been great with the Corona, uh, and uh, and a few bars uh, in cities and, and villages around Haarlem, and uh, and we were working very close with Jopen, and uh, well, and then it was. The beginning of March and we were prepped and ready nearly there and first all the theaters closed and then we thought ah, that's good because we're not in theaters <laughs> and then all the bars closed and uh, well that was it yeah and uh, after well I think we uh, in the beginning we were looking like how do you call them uh, rabbits into uh, flashlights like ah oh, what what's next and then we called and, and wrote to all the people who had already bought their tickets and we placed them to shows in June and then we heard that June was not an option and then we decided to turn it into a film okay uh, actually a film a theater film <laughs> and uh, and and we uh, we worked on that for the last few weeks and we had our opening night online uh, last Saturday, and we filmed it at Café Bert here in the Leidsbuurt. Okay. 
So that was that was our yeah solution for uh, for the problem. Hmm. Is the film uh, somewhere online for people to see? Yes. Or they have to buy it, donate. Uh, or yeah, you can see? buy it. It's it's ten euros, and you can watch it. Well, it's July with a hundred people in your backyard, whatever you want, and uh, if, if uh, you can buy it at tegelava.nl. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quite inter curious. Yeah. <laughs> Mar and I was something to watch. We, we both like beer and bars. Yeah, uh, we too. But what we you asked me when did the fun stopped? Uh, this was a lot of fun, but for me and for my colleagues, the fun is uh, the interaction with the audience. Mm. Be because uh, our shows are never the same because the location uh, changes. We have big bars, we have small bars. Um, we are literally uh, playing, well, in, in between the audience. So if they respond, well, we really feel it and we work with that. And, uh, and that does not happen on film. So that's sort of when the, when the fun stopped. We are so looking forward to meeting our audience again, yeah. I can imagine it's a whole different way of uh, performing yeah. for in, a, in front of a live audience as it is than in front of someone behind a camera. Yeah, and what we are trying to do with uh, these theater performances on location is to get people to uh, theater, watch performances, who do not go to theaters that often or not at all. And uh, we'd like to combine uh, verbinden, it's a really popular word at the moment in, in Dutch, but we really want a different kind of an audience. And, uh, and with, with film, you, we, we have broadened our audience because, uh, well, there are different people who go to see uh, films than uh, theatre performances. But because we play at, um, at places that are well, special to different kind of people. There are, uh, there are people who come to see our show not because they like theater, but because they like the, the bathhouse or they, they love tulips or whatever. And then they say, okay, that's, that's funny. There is a show at my, my favorite bathhouse, at my favorite bar, I'd like to see that. And, um, and that's very special because yeah, you, you, can, you can have a moment of magic with new people. Very yeah. nice. Oh. And during the um, uh, period of the intelligent lockdown, yeah. as they phrase it here, um, did you find that as a productive period for yourself creatively uh, and for your, your theater group? Or was it uh, different people processed, I find, the whole period or the whole situation yeah. in, a, in very, very different ways? Yeah, it, was, it felt a bit like a wave. I went from, we can do this, to... Uh, <sighs> depression to uh, ah, we have a new solution so really big heights and <laughs> deep lows and that was uh, tiring every now and then but um, in the end it was productive we have done a lot we have worked our asses off especially to uh, stay close to our audience and um, I've, I wrote a children's book that okay. is in production right now. So I did a lot. We did a lot of online classes. Um, we have... Online classes uh, about what? For children, because okay. um, uh, a f yeah, a few of my colleagues, uh, well, we were all out of work and they thought, well, what if we make really nice online classes? So for six weeks until the May vacation, we had, we, we, we built our online school thuis naar school and, and children just zoomed in in their class and we had real teachers and they gave uh, three hours of online classes and uh, actors were um, being the classmates and children could write comments or ask questions and we would uh, give them to the teachers and, uh, and we made funny, funny films in between, we had uh, cultural classes, we had um, physical classes. So it was really three hours of actual school. And we all did that for free. 
uh, work really hard every morning uh, from, from 9 to 12 and then uh, in the afternoon um, make the, the show for the next day. So that was really nice and um, uh, met a lot of nice people, that's, that's always a good thing. And we had, with Tegen Lava, in these four months, we had two opening nights, two new productions, so Hop, and a production for uh, Theater na de Dam, which is the 4 and the 5th May, the Liberation Day. And uh, we had a, a theatrical walk through the Leidse Buurt. Um, uh, and you could see, hear, listen to uh, yeah, beautiful stories that really happened during the World War II in the Leidse Buurt. So we had to either cancel it, which was a, a really a, such a pity thing. It's a you know, project that is really near and close to my heart. And then I found a solution, yay! Because in October in Holland you have the Children's Book Week mm -hmm. and the Month of History. And the theme this year is history and then sp specifically the history of your own family and your own community, your own city. So we said, okay, can we place, replace that whole project to October? And we did. Yay! Oh, that's great. So that's great. So all the artists, the singers, the musicians, the um, uh, um, builders, they, they have replaced the project and we're still going to do that. So we were busy with that. We had two reprises. I don't know the English word for that. Uh, reruns. Reruns, yeah. Reruns. One, one of them is placed in May 2021, and the other which is cancelled. So we have to call. Had to call everyone. No, it's not refunds. Stuff like that. So that was there was a lot of time, uh, well wasted, not but on production, and. After that was done, that's when the creation started again. Because <laughs> we thought, okay, this is going to last. We do not know when there will be a vaccine. We do not know when we can be with, uh, well, two people in two meters uh, once again, sitting next to each other. So what can we make from September on until, well, uh, there is a vaccine or, or whatever happens. The good thing was that from the 1st of July, we as actors can be on stage close to one another. That helps. But still, we have to keep some space between the audience. And How does that change? How do the rules affect you as a group of actors? Well, we were cuddling all the time. <laughs> so it was a Corona buddy? Uh, they called yeah. Like that. I, in Belgium, I heard that's really great. You, you can can make two bubbles. You have the, the bubble of your family, but you are allowed to create another bubble, a bubble of friends or a bubble of colleagues. Okay. So uh, you cannot have a fee for, or, or a, a fee for a, a buta for being in that bubble. So uh, we said, okay. okay, lava is our second bubble. And um, so if the bow has come along, you say, excuse me, but we're in this, a bubble. This is our bubble. <laughs> I do not see my family, but this, no, so that, uh, but, but for us, that means that we, well, yeah, theater, it, 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 we, you're touching all the time. And, and literally our stages, especially in a bar, are that small that, that we cannot stand or act one uh, and a half meters aside. So. Uh, that was good news for actors and dancers in, in Holland. And, um, and, and then we had to find, okay, but what can we bring for the next well, year, maybe, um, within the possibilities? Oh. And we came up with a brilliant plan. Okay. <laughs> Actually. Can you uh, share a little bit of the plan without yes. giving away any trade no, secrets? No, no, no. Uh, uh, yes, we can, because this is a, a really uh, a long uh, wish that we have. Uh, in, in Holland, we had the milkman for a very long time. That was a really big boss who just drove into your street and you could buy, well, whatever. And uh, with all the supermarkets and, and uh, cities getting bigger, the, the milkman in, in Dutch it was called the SRV. Leven de man van de SRV, van je hyper de Uh That 
only in a few villages in the north are still milkmen. But we thought, okay, with this whole corona, everybody's doing stuff online. The, the, the buses are, are driving in and out of the, of the, the streets. Oh, like the Albert Hein delivery, yes, delivery, everything. everything. So they bring everything to your home. Yeah. And now we bring theater to your home. Uh -huh. So we want to buy a, a milkman bus. We have one in option. And, uh, and we want to bring culture and we want to bring theater. And the saying in Dutch, van de melkboer, I think in English it's from the postman. That means a child that is a bit odd. You do not know who his dad is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, usually the well, back in the day, it was either the postman or the milkman. Oh yeah. So. Well, in Dutch, it is. <laughs> if, if you have a child, if she's a bit odd or he's a bit odd, you say, oh, he's from the milkman. So we thought, <laughs> if if we call it the the milkman, that that's always how our show get bigger. We start with well with the location. And then it's it's the, the bus, the milkman bus, and then you say, okay, it's van de Melboer from the milkman, and then it that has a story to it. Okay, what if you are from the milkman, or what does that mean that that you're the uh, you call it the the, the the ugly little Douglin or yeah, something? The black sheep. The black sheep, yeah. And then that's where stories uh, come. So that's actually what we want, and. The, the good thing is that we can upscale or downscale the audience or uh, the, the, the place and uh, we, we can do things inside the bus, very small audiences, or we can open it up and, and have people sitting around the bus. And then um, the idea is now that this will lead to a big open air show in say May, June next year, but the whole well investigation, every, the, the, the whole uh, production and the creative way to that, we want to make that visible for the audience as well with uh, podcasts and, sh and, and very small, tiny performances. So interviews with an actual milkman or um, an interview with a person who is actually from the milkman <laughs> Or, and, and we have a bus that can bring, uh, give, um, and uh, get stories from people. So we were thinking, okay, if you, if you look at the next year, well, in September everything starts, are we back to normal and what is normal? And then in December you have all the celebrations the, with, with gifts and stuff. Or, can we celebrate in big groups? Can we have a happy new year? How are we going to celebrate? Or yeah, we have no idea. And in February, there is always the, uh, the vacation uh, fair, you know, with people who are looking forward to the summer, but can we go on holidays? Or so we were, we're thinking to do a Grote Verheug show, this is a looking forward show in, in February. And then all this material and all the characters that we come up that have something to do with the milkman, we bring to the show in May. That's the, the big idea. <laughs> you got the idea down. That's, yeah. <laughs> so the answer to the question was yes, the Corona period was quite creatively it, productive for you. It was, it ah, was. That's great to know. Um, yeah. So yeah, usually then I ask what you're busy with now, but uh, you just that, that's, explain that's that. That's this, yeah. Um, before we uh, actually turn the camera on, we were discussing a few other details or about uh, stuff about there have been recently some debates going on yeah. about the cultural sector and uh, the problems around it dealing with the financing. Yeah. Um, maybe we could step back and go back into that a little bit because I think you were quite uh, passionate about that. Yeah, well the, the debates already started before Corona. There were a few very good debates in um, I think January, February about the whole uh, Kunst and Kultur um, program 2021-2024 and the Gemeente Haarlem has not that much money. I mean, we do have a lot of money, but 
we have four very big and uh, internationally uh, uh, valued musea and, and theater and a, a pop podium. So they are in the, the basis uh, funding, actually. And then there's a bit for makers, musicians, for projects. And, um, well, of course, uh, when well, the, the, they had to cut back money, but the, the people from the gemeente were, are really um, battling to keep the money for culture. Because you can be a beautiful city that is appealing to a lot of tourists, but if there is nothing, then the tourists will, will leave. So um, there was a lot of talk about that. And some of the debates were really good, especially the ones where people were coming up with ideas and where people are, were really willing to work together. Uh, I think that was the best thing of this uh, debates before Corona that we were just all most of us in one room and that we for the first time saw how many artists there are in Harlem so we're really oh, well where people met and there were debates that you really thought oh they were only talking about how good it was in the past yeah we're not in the past and and there are so many young artists uh, that need a chance. So we cannot talk about how things were and, and look at them, but listen to the young artists as well. What do they need? And then build up to 21, 24. Uh, yeah. Um, a number of the cultural installing and now seem to be in the, yeah, financial dire straits yeah. due to uh, the situation. Uh, are you yourself a Zetsa pair? I'm a Zetsa pair, yeah. Okay. yeah. Did you apply for the uh, Tozo? Yes, uh, I did, because my husband is a Zetsa pair as well. He's a okay. cameraman. So for us, in, from the 12th of March, the complete agenda was empty. Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff that I do is performing in high schools. All of them cancelled. Uh, performing for people working in healthcare, all of them cancelled. So it was, uh, it, it was really one white calendar. Yeah. So you both were able to um, receive the Tozo? Yeah, one so for two sets of pairs. One for two sets of pairs. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask how much that was? 1500 euros. For, for the whole family. For the whole family. Yeah, there was no solution for two sets of pairs. Really? Yeah, they talked about it. The Kunstbond no. talked about it, said this is a really big po problem, but they said, no, this is what we're doing. So if you had someone, uh, if, if your husband had a salary of uh, 9,000 euros, you could have the Tozo. And no. if you were both sets of bears, you had one Tozo for the whole family. That's crazy. That's really crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it was. But we managed. Yeah. Yeah. It's I know that uh, I also applied for the Tozo and yeah. was able to uh, get it as well. And that for the three months, I had more money on my bank account than I had in eight years <laughs> as a set of pair. But yeah. And also from running the shop, I was not very uh, business lucrative, with, let's say, with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now with the second round of Tozo, have you reapplied? I have reapplied, but I haven't heard from me the Gemeente. Because so in this second round, they were supposed to then take in your partner's yeah. income as well. Which is zero. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know the ins and outs of it all, but it seems quite absurd that if you live in a household where both uh, breadwinners, so to speak, are sets of pairs, yeah. that there's only money for one. Yeah. How does a family afford to pay the rent, to pay the food, to get... Uh, yeah, we we had a, a buffer, uh, like we say in Dutch. Yeah. So we had a bit of savings. Well, that's that's gone, and and, and live very uh, cheap, hmm. actually. And um, what what people do forget is that we a lot of people said, yeah, but you you uh, that that is the choice you make as a ZZ payer, but. We've done this for 20 years now, and we always save up money for 
bad months. I mean, sure. in July and August, if you're not in a festival or whatever, the, the work is not there. So we, we are used to that to save uh, money from March or actually, yeah, from March to June for July and August as well, because work will start in September and then January is often a slow month, month but we, uh, we are really used to that. But now in, in the best month, actually, March to June, there was nothing. So not for the for the daily expenses, but not for this for, for the slow months as well. So that was really we well we just had to trust on our uh, b the bit of savings we have. They Which, never they never say that to uh, the billionaire companies and the CEOs no. about how come you need a bailout? Shouldn't you have put a little around away something for a rainy day? Yeah. <laughs> they never and 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 we are so used to that because you know and even when you when you were sick you know yeah. if you can't work you i must be really 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 sick to if, cancel, to cancel something but if if you can't work you have no money and we uh, both are in a boat forms so if it's it's if it's really serious and we can't work for a long time what's a broad fund a broad fund is actually an insurance but then uh, like an insurance should be it is a group of people 20 to 50 people and you all uh, put in some money every month and that is in a bank account and the moment one of the the group uh, yeah is sick for more than two months uh, he can apply and then from my savings or the, the collective savings uh, we yeah his month is paid oh. up to two years and um, and it's really yeah it's it's really nice because when, uh, I've never been sick but I heard it from someone in my group that you see on your bank account uh, you get 15 euros from Lisbeth, you get 15 euros from Joshua. So you see 50 people donating every month to your benefit. And it's, uh, it's, it's really good because it's sort of a collective uh, health insurance. That's what they, what they say, a social fund net? I, yeah, it is. And because for uh, ZZPers, especially in the cultural sector, the, the, the health insurance, uh, with, of, it's called the Arbeidsongeschiktheidsverzekering. We pay health insurance, of course, but this is really if you cannot work. It is about 300 euros a month and um, it's it's not a saving. I mean, the moment you stop, you all your money is gone. And with the broodfonds, there, there is money. And when, when the pot is filled, they say stop until someone gets sick and then money will go out and they ask you to pay again. It's, oh, it's really nice. It's really nice. It's, uh, I think it's insurance as it should be. Does this sort of insurance also cover stuff like basic mm, sort of her hall receptor from the house arts or stuff like that? Or is it no, that is so, so we have our, our uh, health insurance, but this is, is, this is really for a period, a longer period that you cannot work due to illness. Okay. Yeah. And what, uh, Oh, yeah, I believe uh, I, I, Mara has mentioned this before. Yeah, so. there, there is a, there are I think about five broodfonds in Haarlem. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle is in one in Haarlem, my husband, and I am in uh, one in Amsterdam still. And is this something you have to be on a wait list for? I guess then it, could, it can only uh, fit as a certain amount of people. Yes, you, <laughs> you have to have at least twenty people, and you can have a maximum of fifty, and that is. Uh, well, financial, I, that's not my... There is a Broadfonds Holland. It's uh, the, the people who first uh, came up with this, I think about 10 years ago. And now you can find all information about the different uh, about how it works. And they will say, okay, there's a Broadfonds uh, in Haarlem that's still looking for people or that has an opening. And I believe after 50... It will be, uh, it's too much money. And there is a, a really big um, loyalty and trust issue with it. 
So with 50 people, we have uh, twice a year, we have a dinner or um, something nice, an event together to look, look each other in the eye. Oh, and, really? and still, So it's mostly people, um, I know you, I know you, I know you. And um, because, yeah, the first thing a friend of mine who is a lawyer said, hmm, but that's an easy way to just say you're sick. And I really don't think <laughs> that way. Said, yes, but that is why you have to know each other or someone comes in the group and you know that person and I trust you, so that's okay. So you, you stay in contact, which makes it very interesting for yeah. working together as well. And um, I guess it can be very easy to be cynical about these things. If you yes. If you've watched too many series on Netflix or something yeah. like that, you figure there's some kind of yeah. someone's going to run off to Barbados with the money or something like that. Something like that, but it it really doesn't work that way because the the people who come into a broad funds are well are are people like you you and me who who try to make stuff uh, with and and for the benefit of others. And does the broad funds come into play now for people with uh, financial problems due to the crisis or is that only for if they're sick? Yeah, so only if, uh, yeah, it can be it can be mentally sick yeah. or physically sick, but it is, uh, yeah, it's especially for that. Yeah, it seems uh, I've done a few, well, the number of interviews I've done so far and just talking to people about people that they know who are suffering from uh, burnout. Yeah. and deep depression due to situations in sort of counter counterbalance to a lot of people who have in one way or another thrived yeah. uh, in this situation, thrived or re uh, took that time to reassess, mm -hmm. to kind of find a bit of quiet and peace within themselves to let things go. Um, and so there was a lot of talk, uh, say, at the first few weeks of the crisis where people were really kind of looking reflecting yes and talking about oh when we come out of this uh, society has the opportunity to be better and we can all less less uh druk 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 and yeah, less, yeah, yeah. Uh, keep our agendas free and we don't have to go to every flight every meeting or drive to everything and and it seems now that things have opened up again it's sort of the new normal is just like the old yeah. except with a bit of distancing between, yeah. which is almost nice because then uh, people are not always on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I was talking with my husband the other day and that was right after opening night of the film and I said, I really, I, I think it will take a month before I have the time to reflect and look at what I've, and what we as a theater group have done the last few well, well, to make things happen uh, or, or well, uh, place the audience, keep in touch. We've been working really, really hard. So all these people who say, oh, it was so nice to have my children at home and I finally took the time. Uh, first I thought, well, uh, well, that's that's a good thing. But really, when did she... It, it, I had, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, the corona. <laughs> And, and maybe, uh, well, I think it's me as well. I just, I always try to, to work or find a way to find work, because that, that's what we we've done too. Um, Michelle have, has been making small films for um, uh, small companies in uh, in Harlem just to make some money and to give them some PR and and have some work himself. Uh, think about that, uh, try to find people who are inter interested in that, uh, whatever. So we've done a lot to uh, reach out. You don't strike me as someone who spends <laughs> a lot of time just sort of uh, twiddling their thumbs or staring into space. No. <laughs> I, I place the desk. A friend of mine said, I, I have this old desk who wants to have it. And I thought, oh, that's great, then I will place it in my bedroom. And then I have my own writing table. Well, there's a lot of stuff on my table, <laughs> but I haven't written one sentence yet. I will do that this summer, I think. 
Kitchen tables are always the go-to Kitchen place, tables right? are the best. This is where yeah. the magic happens. We have, a, we have a space in the Nieuwe Vida, and that's lovely to come together, to uh, invite people, uh, and uh, it is, the Nieuwe Vida is a great place. A lot of really nice uh, artists working there. And, uh, but when I really, really need to write, it's the kitchen table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have my, we have the office in the Bauhaus. Yeah. And I got my little corner there with all my stuff. But I, I, I just tend to work at home still. Yeah. I'm glad I have a place to put my stuff yeah. on my crap. <laughs> That's actually it. <laughs> but it's, I just work at the kitchen table. Yeah. But I had to go back... Uh, yeah, the to newer... the debates and... Uh... To what? Oh yeah, I, th I thought you wanted to go back to the debates and the, the newer... Nah, let's, nah. Save, let's save that for now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'd like to talk about uh, the new Vida you just yeah. mentioned because um, I, I know also like you know well I don't work there per se myself but I know a lot of people who do yeah. put their heart and soul into making that place uh, what it is but it's uh, been in jeopardy for quite some time yeah. and you mentioned earlier that there is some sort of decision and there's a sort of process happening now with some other Groups as well. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah, the the new Vida is uh, near the Lichtfabriek yeah. for people who do not know, and that whole uh, area will be well the, the talk of the town. I think in ten years because uh, there will be uh, um, um, houses and uh, the Lichtfabriek, of course, uh, renovated stuff. It will be great, and they say that. They will still have the new Vida for artists, but if we can afford that, that is a big question. Uh, could you just uh, maybe step back or pause a moment and just briefly say what is the new Vida? The new Vida is a building filled with uh, ateliers, uh, studios, studios, yeah. yes, uh, of different artists. Most of them uh, painters, sculptors, uh, uh, graphic. Uh, and, and we as TG Lava, we are the, the black sheep, we, do the, well, we are the weird ones in the group, but it is, I think there are about 35 different artists there, and it has been um, a Krakerspot for 25 years, so every year they have a new uh, period of rent for another year, for 25 years. <laughs> They have been there, but now uh, constructions will start, and there's this uh, project manager, project group who is going to transform the area into something beautiful. And they say that we can come back, but we do not believe that it's well affordable for artists because now it is affordable and it is a perfect way to work individually. But as a team, the new Vida uh, step into Harlem. So this is what we are. And there is, a, there is a gallery inside. So there are expositions every month, uh, performances. It, it's, it, it's a beautiful, rough place. It's really, it's great. So we get to know each other. And we know that in April 2021, uh, we have to leave at least temporarily to uh, for the constructions and i think the, the new vida has been looking for a new place for uh, about five years uh, but it's very hard to find a spot in Haarlem that has that many studios and now they sort of joined forces with other uh, groups that need space and uh, uh, among them at Frans Hals Museum because they have the old collection and they have the new collection collection at uh, Grote Markt, but that is not really pretty. It's nobody knows that it is a museum actually. So we have in Haarlem two empty buildings: the Hudson Bay and the Eglantier. And the Eglantier used to be a very creative space with studios. They they're still there. But um, it is a very expensive uh, place. The Hudson Bay is not property of Haarlem. It, 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 there is a project group who has put a lot of money in the renovation of it. So they want something in it that, that earns a lot of money. So they're thinking about a hotel or whatever. And uh, for the Eglantier, 
they that's the only piece of property that is still uh, over the Gemeente Haarlem. So actually we are hoping that all these groups can go to the Egmantier. But that still won't cover, I think, all the expenses of uh, there is asbest in there. And, and they think of, uh, well, maybe another hotel. But how many hotels of more than 100 rooms can you have in Haarlem? Because, um, and again, people, uh, tourists need something to go to. You can have a city with a hotel, but if there is no culture whatsoever, then the tourists won't come. Has Harlem become a big uh, tourist greedy? So. Well, maybe. I think, yeah, there is a lot of money to make, of course. And Amsterdam is full. Yeah. And if you speak especially to international tourists, I was at a camping site, I think, a year ago. And then I said, well, I, I, I live in, in Harlem, it's next to... Yes, we've been there. We actually wanted to see Amsterdam, but we had an Airbnb in Harlem and we never went to Amsterdam because we loved your city and it's so close to the beach, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so, so a lot of the, 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 the people are moving from the, well, the capitals to the smaller, nicer cities around it. And uh, so there is money to be made sure. from this, but you need to give people other things. And I don't think you want to become the, why well, you call it in Dutch, we say a spoke city, mm -hmm. uh, a ghost town. A ghost town, sorry, yeah. A ghost town where every room is a hotel room or an Airbnb. Well, that was sort of what we heard about Amsterdam yeah. during the lockdown that the center was completely dark at night because. No locals live there. No, and the, so that's you don't want that. I mean, Harlem should be a, is a beautiful city city to visit and to stay in as a tourist. But first of all, it is a city for the Harlemers. So if you can find uh, uh, cultural projects and groups that not only give culture. I will say beauty and magic because we bring culture, we bring beauty, magic, stories to the people who live here and to national and international tourists. Well, I think that then, then, you, then you're fine for the next 100 years. No, I was going to say <laughs> we're right at the point where I'm running out of time. So usually I say to the person I'm interviewing, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add? But I think that's a <laughs> that was, that, that perfect was my way to wrap it up. <laughs> now, Lisbeth, uh, thanks for your time. You're welcome. And good luck with, uh, how do you pronounce the name of the group again? TG Lava. TG Lava. Yeah, well, we have someone who, say, who, who says TG Lava, and that sounds very international. TG Lava. <laughs> right. yes. Check out the website uh, online, Google TG Lava and uh, the film Hope is yes. online as well. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing what you, what you and the milkmen come up with in the yes. future. Yes. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome.